So this is a follow-up video from the earlier set of videos where I'm going to show you how to set up another project called the Blogcast. So I've already got uh, my solution set up, my core, downloaded and install installed. What I want to do now is go into GitHub, back to github.com slash markstyles repositories, and what I want to do is download Blogcast. So I'm going to select this repository, download the zip, go to my desktop. I'm going to unzip this here. I'm going to cut this folder, go to my core source feature, and I'm going to create, I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to re just rename this Blogcast. I'm going to go into Visual Studio. Under Feature, if you haven't added it, add a solution folder called Feature. Add another one called Blogcast. And now you can start to see how I'm structuring this so that each additional repository lives underneath the parent core. But the Feature folder is ignored by the core. And that allows each one of these to be its own repository without affecting the core, but still live in the same solution. And a lot of the structure and configuration wiring and everything is done here in the SCSDK in the larger parent folder and in the subfolders and these modules here, these features. Only the things that are relevant to them live there. So go to Task Runner Explorer. I've already set up my properties. I'm going to run NAT, make sure any properties files that live in here are created. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to right-click Publish. The deploy publishing profile is actually one of the templated files. So now that it exists, I can hit Publish. It's going to publish to the same project, or the same running instance of Sitecore as the others. And now if I jump over to my instance, I hit refresh. So I'm going to sync that. If I jump back to my content tree or refresh system, now if I go to modules, cycle cognitive services, I won't see any changes here. And that's because that's not the service that I'm using. I actually created an item here for the broadcast to home, and there's a layout and a rendering that run this. It's almost entirely a front-end feature. It does use the speech service. So what I do have to do is jump back into create a service here for speech. The speech service, create it. I've already got one here, I can see on the list. So I go to speech and I can go get my keys. What I want to do is get my keys, go back into my local properties, put it in there, or go into the content tree and save it. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so what I've done is I've taken my keys out of Azure, I've pasted them in the other speech section here on the MSSDK node, saved it. And now I'm going to go up and I see here on the content tree I've got this new home item. And this is going to carry the content that text has turned into speech. If I jump back into Visual Studio and I go into the Blogcast project, open up App Config, here's Config, and if I look here I see this Blogcast.local. Now this is the URL that you're going to need to go in and put into your host file or your IS bindings. But once you get that set up, you're going to want to jump back into Chrome and browse to it. So here you get a button, you have some text, and what you want to do is hit this button. And what it's going to do is take up all the content off the page, break it up into small enough chunks, send it to the speech service. When it comes back, It'll start sticking them back together, and it's going to do it for two different uh, 
voice types. One is male, one is a female. So if you hit play, you'll be able to hear them. You have two different versions of it. I'm just going to quickly show you where all this code lives. So all the blog cast here is doing is that as a, a play button for the male and female, it has an input, a form here, it just puts out the, the content from that page. And that's about it. When you submit, it's almost all entirely JavaScript driven. It's just going to get the content on the page, send it off, and allow you to manage playing it. Here in the controller is really where all the action happens. So the create media file, this is the, the actual method that's what it's called. And what it's going to do is take in the, uh, the page, current page that you're on from the ID, get the content field. Uh, here I'm stripping out some HTML. I'm also stripping out sub and super tags. Uh, any content within them you don't want red as well. Basically down here I'm defining the two paths that I want to be able to create. I'm here and I'm passing in here for different uh, people. And then it's going to create that file and then I can send it back. You would set it up or pass it back or have it published based on the path the item or whatever you want on publish or on batch. And then you can turn your blog into a podcast with the use of speech API services.